Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and I have just bought Australia's ugliest Porsche. All right, my name's Jeff, and I have a problem. I have uh, started getting a few too many Porsches, but uh, this one I couldn't pass up. It's just so so ugly. <laughs> I had to save it. Um, there are lots of very questionable modifications on this car and I'll take you through them now. It is a, um, it was the cheapest one I could find in Australia by a long way, which is quite understandable when you see some of the things that were done to this. And I don't mean to be derogatory to the guy who obviously loved this at one stage and spent a lot of money in very misguided places. So uh, I'll take you through some of the really, really interesting, bizarre quirks of this car right now. All right, so one of the first things I noticed when I got to the car in real life that I didn't notice in the ad is you can actually see there are stickers under the paint down the side which is a bit of a, a grim reaper and some flames and stuff that have actually been clear coated over the top of so it's actually under the paint it is going to be an absolute nightmare <laughs> to try and get rid of uh, you can also see that they painted over the door handles didn't remove the rubbers or anything so the paint sort of flicks off and yeah it's uh, it's really they did mention in the ad that it was uh, repainted recently and that was a good selling point for the car, which I thought was, uh, yeah, quite interesting. Moving on down to our uh, side pipe. So these are fake looking exhaust tips, but this is just a panel that's been stuck on over the top of what looks like the factory skirts with the obligatory speed holes and red paint. Yes. So actually one of the nice selling features of this car is these wheels, which are actually genuine Porsche 997, I think, 19 inch wheels, which uh, look like they're actually in fair condition. There's a couple of gutter scrapes and stuff, but they're in pretty good nick. One of the interesting things when you look closer is if you have a look at the brake calipers, and he's repainted the brake calipers and, uh, and sort of put a Porsche sticker of some sort on there. But if you go to the other side, you can see that this sticker is on upside down and the other side of the car is the same there's one the right way and one backwards which um, creates an interesting look moving back of course we have the obligatory tinted tail lights and the rear wing is fantastic because it has built-in drs it is uh, it's a fantastic thing we it's uh, it's self uh adjusting depending on the speed Okay, so the more I work my way around this car, the more nuggets of gold I found. So along with my active DRS and uh, the enormous exhaust pipes, they've uh, got this homemade diffuser on the back. And at first I was looking at these things sort of thinking, where do I know them from? And it looks like they are wood screwed on door stops. They are rubber door stops and they have been painted over. The paint is obviously also flaking off of them. So that is... Uh, Look, it's, it's an interesting method of uh, car modification. Uh, thumbs up for creativity, but mm. yeah. So also on the back, we have these uh, real fake carbon fiber vents that don't vent anything. Uh, and uh, some sort of antenna, I don't know if that was put on for show or actually is supposed to do something. And um, when I was looking at it, I was wondering what these parts were. They're sort of these weird things stuck on and um, I was quite interested to find out what they were and that's when we had a look further forward and realized that these stick on scoops here they had to cut the bottom off to fit them on where they were so don't waste anything and they've reused the base of these on the back so <laughs> that's quite a uh, quite a creative use if you uh, can call it that all right so the front end is where it starts really getting interesting so we have this big uh it's actually like a fiberglass panel that is stuck onto the factory bonnet and uh, has these sort of big ribs and vents in there. And also you can't go past a couple of uh, American Bald Eagle stickers on the front. You can't have one, you need two. So two, and these have been painted over also. And this bonnet is so heavy. You could, you could, you could do a, a weight session trying to lift this bonnet up and down. It, uh, it weighs a ton. That brings me to the um, 
Brings me around to the headlights, and these headlights, both of them are just sitting in place there. <laughs> There's definitely something I need to do about them to uh, make sure that they don't just fall out on the ground. Moving lower on the front, we, uh, we have a few more of our doorstop aero mods. But by far, the thing that uh, has me shaking my head the most is that on both sides, we have these light bars that are molded in and completely 100% block any airflow to the radiators. So I was wondering why the, the temperature gauge didn't get too high, but it was up sort of in the, the sort of 90 degree range on the freeway yesterday, driving this home. Yeah, that's probably because it gets zero airflow. I don't know how this thing is not overheating every single day of its life. It's, uh, yeah, that's, that was a very interesting um, idea that was not very well thought out at all. All right, so let's move on to the glorious interior. So um, there's elements you can see he's actually spent some money. Somebody's uh, done some trim panels throughout the car. That's all uh, down here in the footwell as well. Um, Along with, there are LEDs throughout the car. They're all over the place. And uh, yeah, this thing, driving at night, is a very interesting uh, <laughs> situation. The whole interior glows, but the headlights, which are tinted, are by far the worst headlights I've ever seen. And to add insult to injury, the, uh, the windscreen is also tinted. So you cannot see anything through this car at night. It is a, uh, a very dangerous situation. If you can see there, they see the tint on the windscreen. It's uh, yeah, pretty scary. But uh, you've got to love a uh, Dragon steering wheel cover. And for some reason, a blue gear knob when everything else in the car is red. Now, one of my friends also uh, made a crack already about this handbrake cover that uh, makes it look something along the lines of a male appendage. I'll leave that up to your imaginations. But um, another interesting feature is uh, that it has Mazda RX-8 seats in it. That's what I believe these things are, uh, telltale by the, uh, the rotor symbol in the seats. And uh, back here you can see this has been spray painted on this uh, mesh look and there's also mesh inserts here. And I actually found this sitting in the boot of the car, this removable panel that uh, slips over the center nicely to add that, uh, that, that final touch to add to the Eagle. Although because it doesn't have the dip in the center of it, when you try and put the roof up, it actually collects it and put, tries to pull it off. <laughs> so uh, yeah. That's uh, an interesting, uh, interesting little quirk. So moving into the center of the car and uh, we have a stereo that does not work um, and missing all the trim around the edges of it. But we do have these beautiful little uh, clip-on panels that go around all of the uh, air vents. So they really, uh, they really add to the fun. And of course, the bottle of who knows what hanging off of the rear vision mirror. Now, if we... Uh, move our DRS wing out of the way, we can get in and see the, uh, the fantastic um, well-mounted stereo setup in the, uh, in the back of the car that uh, I don't even know if it's actually connected. This just helps with keeping the rear wheels planted on the ground around the, uh, whenever you're driving this car. So speaking of driving, there are a, a few little things I need to be aware of with this car. For one, when I turn the ignition on, it, uh, it sort of goes all the way to on and you have to physically turn it back. There's no spring left in the ignition barrel. So that's something to be aware of. Um, the electric windows work most of the time. The roof actually works and actually seems like it's in uh, reasonable shape. I will uh, we'll put that up now. Whoop, I forgot my little cover. <laughs> so we have a roof that works. So uh, most of it, despite some of the questionable modifications, seems to work. Oh, and before we take off, let me show you the uh, pièce de résistance. What is a fun car without flashing lights inside your bonnet grills? Doesn't get much better than that. All 
All right, well, uh, let's go for a quick drive and uh, you guys can experience the, uh, the absolute joy that this vehicle provides. is extremely loud it has such a drone on it it um, it literally gave me a headache I had to drive it an hour and a half home and the drone sitting on the freeway last night was absolutely insane definitely the first thing I'm gonna to have to fix on this car um, as far as the driving goes the engine and the gearbox actually feel quite healthy there doesn't seem to be anything uh, glaringly wrong with it besides the uh, the temperature creeping up which I think I can explain it's uh, it's actually quite a uh, mechanically reasonably sound car I think time will tell there is a little bit of vibration in the steering there's a um, there's definitely uh, some poor suspension choices going on there I have no idea what the suspension is under this so uh, that would be something interesting I need to figure out this car definitely needs my um, indicator fix that I did on my on Archie, my 996. The uh, indicators cancel and uh, sorry, don't stay engaged, and yeah, there's there's all sorts of issues with the uh, the indicators uh, on this car, which is obviously a common 996 986 problem. That's um, a relatively simple fix. Trev's uh, box rod on the track at um, in Tasmania and the thing was an absolute gun. So a lot of you are probably thinking, why have I bought this car when I already have two 911 sitting uh, right behind it? And uh, there is a method to my madness. So basically we have uh, Archie, my 996. That is just a daily driver. That's a uh, reasonably under the radar, nice, comfortable daily driver that's um, doing its job very well. And then we have Harry, which is my 2.8 uh, RSR inspired hot rod thing. That is, uh, that is my road trip slash uh, just, just fun uh, weekend car. I have a daily and have a, uh, a very expensive uh, toy that uh, I can use for weekends and I don't want to risk them on the track. I can't afford to break either of those to fix them, but this was very cheap and uh, I can just use this and if I break it, 
I don't want to break it, but if I do break it, it's not the end of the world and I can fix it and, it, and, it, and it's not needed right now. And it's just, it can be something that's fun that I can develop along the way, improve my skills as a driver and, uh, and build it up to be faster and be a, a really fun track toy. So that is what the purpose of this car is. And along with the, uh, the theme that I've already had with uh, Harry and Archie, obviously named after members of the royal family, I was uh, considering what I would name uh, the, uh, the new addition and um, being a bit of a black sheep uh, and uh, slightly uh, inappropriate, maybe <laughs> to put it nicely, I was considering calling it Andrew, but I think that's a little bit... Um, yeah, that's not, not quite cool. And <laughs> when I saw the boxer symbol at the back had been modified, this definitely is the Rockster. So from now on, we have Harry, Archie, and the Rockster. So uh, hopefully uh, you guys are uh, keen to come along for the ride and enjoy the process of uh, building this into something fun and, uh, and maybe uh, rectifying some of the, <laughs> the slight issues with this car. It should be it should be good. I'm really looking forward to it. So um, like and uh, subscribe and hit the little bell and all that sort of stuff uh, to uh, follow along. And if you want to watch the videos uh, ad free a day early, uh, join us on Patreon. It really helps out the uh, the channel to bring more of this stupid content <laughs> and uh, um, if you are searching for any parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePassByJeff.com first. All right guys, see you in the next one.